Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us. Um, I am super excited to uh, welcome uh, for the first time to our webinar channel, Dr. Jared Bergman. Um, some of you guys watching might recognize his name. Uh, Dr. Bergman is a fully trained nutrition response testing practitioner, a chiropractor, uh, an amazing researcher. Um, so Dr. Bergman, thank you so much for taking time out of your incredibly busy schedule today to uh, join us and give us information on your awesome products uh, from Hedron. So thank you, Adam. Yeah, before we launch into anything, um, can you just give us a little bit more of a background uh, on you and your company so that you know our viewers can understand uh, where we're coming from with these? Sure, sure. And I want to thank everybody for taking the time out today to listen to what we have to say here. But, but yeah, um, how it all started, it was like we were talking earlier, but like it was, um, we were uh, testing all of the time. We were actually muscle testing this. Um, and it was born out of muscle testing. And I guess how we, how we first arrived at that was um, my firstborn child, he was having trouble sleeping in his crib at night. And uh, we were trying to figure out every, we couldn't figure anything out why, why he would not settle down, okay? Um, and my wife, she is quite the researcher. She, she was um, very uh, uh, driven to figure this out. So, so we came across, long story short, we came across uh, geopathic stress. Geopathic stress is kind of a form of electromagnetic frequency, but coming from the earth. Uh, it it uh, develops from, uh, can develop from fault lines underneath the earth, can be water lines, and can also be potentially man-made as well. Uh, so these, these frequencies or waves, especially when they cross, can get anywhere from 250 hertz to 500 hertz, and you can be exposed to that all night long. So the big fix um, for my son was to actually move his bed out of the way of the geopathic str the stress line that we did find. Um, and that led us into uh, thinking about, well, what about the EMFs that are out there from the cell towers and, and from the phones now? And at that time it was, I think it was 3G at that time, the third generation, uh, 2G going into 3G. Uh, and we were also thinking, well, what about, you know, he's going to be going to school someday, perhaps, if we don't homeschool, and they have Wi-Fi in the schools, and they have the, the, um, the uh, relay towers on the sides of the schools now, too. How are we going to protect him from that, right? right? So it really started off with our, our interest um, as far as... Uh, our family was concerned. We we never thought in a million years we'd be selling anything to anybody. Um, we were just really uh, exploring what we could do for our family, and awesome. that's that, that's how it was born, really. Well, most things, you know, um, are generally born that way. Somebody's like, I got to do something to take care of my family, and it rapidly grows well beyond that. So. Um, I do want to remind all of our viewers, um, this is an interactive webinar. If you have questions for doc, Dr. Bergman as we go through, please feel free to write in, let me know, and I'll make sure your questions do get answered. Um, now, you supplied us with a presentation for today, Dr. Bergman, and I'd like to actually just go ahead and get into that. Sure. Um, so I'm going to bring this up for you here. So over to you, Dr. Bergman. Okay, you can just move right to the next one. All right. And we can go to the next one. And we did, that's my family there. So we can we can go right to the next one, actually. <laughs> awesome. Good looking family, by the way. 
The tallest one is the sleep troubled boy. <laughs> wow. Looks like he could be a football player. <laughs> he, he, he was, he was an all conference. All right. Um, we already actually have a question coming in. Um, sure. Catherine France is here with us and she asked, um, can the necklace survive going through the washing machine? Yes, and I get that question a lot, and it can. All right, excellent. Just make sure you inspect it a little bit and ground it, um, and we'll get into why grounding too, but um, I would ground that, that pendant out as well, just to make sure. Awesome. And then, Angelica, yes, this is being recorded. We will be sending out the recording uh, after we're done with the webinar today. You can go to that that very first one with the cell phone. All right, there we go. Yeah, okay. So this was the, the first product we ever basically came up with. Uh, and how that happened was, like I said before, we, we, we did, we put uh, our kids to bed and we started muscle testing. And, and we, were, we were muscle testing all of these these different um, minerals and, and, and crystals and uh, different frequencies, you name it, we were testing it. That's mm -hmm. originally how that happened. And then we started searching um, uh, through uh, geophysicists to work with uh, that could help us make a design for this and actually test it on more of a traditional level, um, if you want to call it that, uh, on how well these will work. So what we figured out was um, we sent it to California, and these, these studies are actually in the talk a little bit later on, but we sent it to California Institute of Electronics and Mechanics, and they tested it with several different, um, different types of, of um, implements to determine shield effectiveness and also absorption. So shielding effectiveness and signal absorption were, were the two biggest things that, that they um, were actually looking for. And what they came up to figuring out was that uh, we had a 99.8% um, shielding effect of the aberrant EMF. Um, so uh, we looked at plane wave electronic, which basically means the plane wave electricity and also the magnetic wave electricity. Um, okay. So uh, we separated the electromagnetic out to see how uh, each component would work. Gotcha. And uh, then- all a quick question that came in here. Um, that I uh, do want to ask for you because this sounds a little unusual and I'm hoping you can shed a little light on it. Okay. Uh, so Luella um, asks, she had a patient uh, who started wearing the Hedron pendant and then there was an unusual smell uh, that started coming from it um, after she started wearing this. Do you know why that might happen? Um, typically this doesn't really push detox however there could be a way that that um that once the body is resonating it it may have uh some sort of a detox detoxifying effect i don't know what that smells root where that smell would be necessarily uh from uh without checking into it deeper Maybe pushing a little bit of detox, but typically these don't detoxify a person. Okay, but it's not something that's actually coming from the pendant itself. It should not be. No, I've never had anybody um, okay. uh, uh, tell me that before. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, the the other feature is the human performance technology uh, that's implemented now in all of them. This was a later stage uh, that we put onto the pendant. Um, so everybody's everybody's uh, familiar with 528, or most people are familiar with 528 hertz. That's that um, uh, frequency that 
that is uh, an enlightening frequency that most people go to. They listen to the tones and things like that. Mm -hmm. We went with 540. We also have 528 there, but 540 is significant because if you add up all the angles, we get into a little geometry here. If you add up all the uh, 108 degree angles of a pentagon, uh, that's going to equal 540. 108 is another very specific number, and we'll get into that in a little bit too. Um, so we want to hold on to that 108. But uh, 540, the factors of 540 uh, is 72. Now, when you look in, at an icosahedron, which is the symbol on the hedron itself, you can pull out a, a, a pentagon out of it. Um, it, it. That's another structure with that. Now, the interesting aspect with the icosahedron, icosahedron is also a very, uh, highly associated to water. And what are we made most of? We're, we're made most water. of water, right? right. Um, in the physical sense, we're made um, mostly of water. Uh, and then the um, 108 uh, angle, if you look at a water molecule, it has an angle of 108 degrees. Interesting. So, so we put these together and we pulled out 72 because um, 72 is a factor of the 540 and it's a, it's a factor of all the platonic solids. Um, okay. that, that 72 was, was, the 72 degrees was very specific because of the ingredients that we put into the hedron devices needed a ratio. So we were testing one night and, and um, we came upon the seven to two ratio. And then we, we further came upon the two to seven ratio. So we, we split the number. Um, and I don't know why we did that, we just did. And that was a, a, a key component to how to put this together. Gotcha. And, um, and, and this is all something that like the geophysicists were helping you guys figure out as you were developing the products, or is this something you happened to stumble upon while you were testing at home? They gave us, they gave us, um, helped us with the the actual geometry of everything, and then um, we were playing around with the numbers at home uh, because we didn't know how much of of because there's twelve minerals and crystals that go into this. And we didn't know how much of each to put into this. We needed uh, some sort of a ratio uh, to, to actually balance these out. Um, so we don't basically blow out the downloads. Uh, and I think most of the audience would know what that means. Um, so so um, yeah, so we came up with the, the two ratios of 7 to 2 and 2 to 7, because if you multiply 27 times 2 several times, you're going to get most of the angles of the platonic solids as well. Interesting. And then we also embedded the Schumann resonance, uh, which is a big deal because uh, the body operates between 7 and 10 hertz. Optimally, it actually... Um, does really well with the vagus nerve uh, uh, between that 7 to 10 hertz, uh, really turning on the, the parasympathetic side, but, but really balancing the autonomic nervous system. So that is one thing that we made sure that we embedded in there. And then, you know, the alpha brain wave is at around 8, and, and uh, the heart uh, rhythm uh, operates really well between 8 and 10, and um, uh, the other thing with that is if you consider um, a person can live three to eight weeks without uh, food, depending on their hydration, uh, they could, let's give them a week without water. Um, but if you don't have the Schumann resonance present, uh, you will feel the effects within an hour and um, 24 hours, things start to fail. Uh, and they figured this out, uh, the Russians figured this out, a cosmonaut um, uh, was up there without a Schumann generator and 
or an ion generator, and uh, he started to lose his lose his uh, train of thought very rapidly with within that hour. Um, right. Now, so, quick question for you before we get back to um, your your presentation. Sure. Uh, I've done a bit of research and I've been asked this a couple of times. So right now um, with the 5G towers, um, they operate up into the gigahertz range, do they not? Yes. Okay. Uh, so once you're getting up into that range, it's actually uh, a frequency that's actually very detrimental to the human body and the immune system. Would that be correct? Mm -hmm. as well? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so the pendants do those handle the 5G signal? Uh, the pendants do have the 5G um, components to them to handle that 5G signal, just like the cell phone shield. Gotcha. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's that's a big concern for a lot of people right now because it's just, it's getting worse. And I've mm -hmm. already heard talks of 6G. Yes. Uh, coming soon. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you. I just wanted to ask that question because that's one of the most frequently asked questions that I get. Um, right. Another question too that I've got I I get frequently is okay. So if I have the pendant, why should I put something on my phone? Well, um, that that depends a lot on the person. So if you're if you're going to be carrying your phone um, around frequently, well, I would have you first put something on your phone. Uh, what reinforces uh, our our body's biofield or plasma energy field or however you want to refer to that, um, the pendant has that uh, that capability to be doing that all day long as long as you're wearing it, right? So uh, most people carry around their their phone more than they remember to put on a pendant. So it, it just depends upon the person. All right, a uh, question that came in and says, um, and Jeannie, I might need you to clarify your question a little bit here, but she says, isn't 6G Hertz supposed to be good for us? Um, that is what I'm hearing and reading. So um, typically, and, and, and I would love for you to expand upon this because you've obviously done the research. I know once you get above a certain Hertz frequency in terms of like EMF signal, um, it actually becomes detrimental to the body. So uh, what is that make break point of beneficial versus detriment? Um, so as, as far as that's concerned, the referring to the 6G, uh, we don't really know. So that the bandwidth that it's on uh, it has a lot to do with um the speed also in which this information is coming to us so one way i heard it described and it was a it, it was very enlightening uh and simplified was that basically you have a highway and you have road signs put up that's more the the 4g aspect right so you're under control in some respect but when you get to 5G and even 6G, you're gonna take those road signs away and open up all the lanes and you can go as fast as you want. Mm -hmm. um, so that ener energy coming into the body can be detrimental on different levels because we don't all operate at one, um, one specific free frequency because our bodies oscillate because we're adaptive. So yeah. these fre these frequencies can still throw us off. Thank you. All right. Um, so we've heard about 6G. We don't know when it's actually coming. That was another question that came in. You know, we're still dealing with getting 5G up and running. Um, right. Fortunately and unfortunately, all at the same time, because technology can be our friend, make things easier, but at the same time, it does take its toll on us. So. Let's go ahead and get back to your um, your uh, 
Yeah. Sure. This. <laughs> wow. Yeah, words so, just uh, utterly failed me. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is just the the larger device, and like it says, it goes on the laptops, iPads. Um, I've even had people put it on different types of kitchen appliances, like their blenders and things like that, because it, it, they they some people are a little bit more sensitive than others as far as that's concerned. And then now we have these um, smart homes um, more and more. Uh, and that's where the home harmonizer, the next slide, that's where this one comes in. Um, we can move to that next slide. Yeah, so the home harmonizer, that reaches out a uh, thousand square feet. So that's a thousand square feet up or down, um, not just side to side. Mm -hmm. And it also, uh, the home harmonizer and the pendant, these are two things that ideally, because again, we go back to those ratios, ideally this, these would be grounded um, because they take up quite a bit of uh, static and it actually helps reset them or stabilize the signals that are embedded into the material. Awesome. All right, we've got more questions coming in, Dr. Bergman, so sure. pull your, pull your uh, presentation down here real quick. Uh, first question is, uh, what do we know about, or what do you know about uh, whether or not terahertz are good or bad? Terahertz. Hmm. Um, they can be they can be good actually um, it again it depends upon the range that it's in okay awesome and then uh, next question is um, if the headphone is put in, into a wallet and put in and then into a pocket so like they take the pin it and somebody sticks it in their wallet and then they put it in their pocket is it still effective yeah actually it should be still effective because one of the things that we um also embedded was we went with a, a scalar frequency embedding as well um and the scalar frequency it's a longitudinal uh dielectric wave that actually helps occupy the space um mm -hmm. So scalar frequency that doesn't really flow. It's it's there. It's kind of like um, um, air and wind. Wind flows, but air is always there. Uh, that's one way to describe uh, this the scalar output. It's a pressure uh, that comes from the device itself uh, that generates this scalar frequency. Awesome. So, and I'm yeah. sure we'll cover that more in your presentation here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna ask a couple more questions and we'll get back to the presentation. Um, this next question I'm gonna answer, it says, how do these products compare with the Pure Life UNS uh, personal EMF neutralizer? Uh, so over the last year, I've actually been doing research on finding a product that would be better suited for you guys as practitioners. Uh, the Pure Life worked uh, for its intended purposes when we had it, but we started running into some issues like it was difficult to turn on. Um, you know, you weren't there, the, you couldn't tell when it was charging, things like that. So, when I began researching looking at other EMF protection devices uh, and we found Hedron, uh, we extensively tested uh, muscle testing lines, both the Hedron and the Pure Life. And what we found is um, the Pure Life worked, but the Hedron tested uh, far better um, in terms of getting people up to the optimal range with muscle testing um, and everything like that. So that's really where that all developed from. I was looking for something more, more plug and play, I guess you want to say, for you and your patients to be able to understand and use. So that led us to where we are right now and that's why i wanted to do this webinar with dr bergman because because then he can explain you know the the technology behind why these work so well and like we alluded to dr bergman 
is a fully trained nutrition response testing practitioner. So you were telling me before the webinar that everything you did was born out of muscle testing. Mm -hmm. So uh, next question, uh, I'm gonna actually ask two questions at the same time. Um, how long do these last? And do your products for the phones need to be replaced like other products on a yearly basis? Actually, no, they don't need to be replaced on a yearly basis. If you have the same phone, you can uh, still be using uh, that where it it doesn't burn out, so to speak. Um, so what we did in uh, a laboratory setting, uh, I mentioned the lab earlier, uh, they, they basically tested it as far as it could go and they tested it to the point where it started to melt down. And if you extrapolate the frequencies that they used out as far as electromagnetic frequency is concerned, uh, if it keeps going up from uh, 5G, we're at the um, 5G, then it goes up into 6G and they started dialing it uh, completely up uh, as far as bandwidth is concerned. Uh, they got to a point of meltdown and technically speaking if there was a 9G out there that's that's um, where we would experience a, a, an issue. Gotcha so that's pretty significant I mean the fact yeah. that you stress tested these things to get them to the point where they actually melt right right and the the actual scientist said uh we don't know why this is why this is necessarily working when they were testing this how how it's uh holding up as well as it is which um uh we didn't have an answer for them either really um but but it did it, it did hold up and it was tested on more than one occasion so um wasn't a fluke uh so to speak gotcha um so the the other questions are were um what's the lifespan of the pendants and the products so um the lifespan of these products we always give it about uh five years um most of the time it can go much much longer than that it's it's it has to do with the care of the user uh, many times. So uh, like if you repeatedly throw this in the wash or you know, um, throw it in the dryer and, or, or you uh, leave something out in the car at a hundred and some degrees uh, as far as like the home harmonizer or something like that, you may see some, some uh, flaws take place there with the outside of it. Um, but in general, these last quite a long time. Awesome. So it's well worth the investment then. And, and they're not yeah. super expensive. We can get into the pricing outside of the webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so um, the other question is, is there a difference between the colored side and the black and white side of the pen? Oh, um, so the... The side to the pendant, no, it, there is no no um, real uh, difference there. The the uh, the only small or slight difference that I would say uh, would be that the icosahedron on the uh, front side of it that is um, kind of a, a foil material that is uh, hooked to the core of the pendant um, but other than that it, it really doesn't matter what side you have it on awesome thank you all right let's get back to your presentation great questions guys keep them coming finish up with this one <laughs> okay so yeah the home harmonizer let's see did we finish that yeah i mean i think we did i think i think we did yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, um, so the other thing with that is, so that here's 
what we did here. You know, pictures worth a thousand words in some cases. So uh, this is in India, actually, on a farm. You can on one of these pictures, you can look way back on the edge of the field. You see his little hut, and he allowed us to um, treat water. And in the um, laboratory setting, we treated water. Uh, using the frequencies that we use for hedron, and we sprayed it on his field. Uh, the soil was not much different starting out than what you see in the in the foreground, and then we um, treated the water with the with the frequencies and sprayed it on the field. Um, I think it was one season we sprayed probably uh, six times. I think it was. And we had a really good outcome in that, that top picture. You can see some of the burn marks there where the grass was, was cut off. But for the most part, uh, it looks um, uh, very much improved from the soil quality that they had before. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a woodsman and a farmer at heart. So this was one of these projects that uh, I thought would be fun to do. And I just wanted to share these pictures. And then we did do, um, we did flowers, we did all sorts of, of different things, but uh, I had the pictures available for the tomatoes. Uh, so I put those up and we dipped those in, in the same water that we prepared for the fields, uh, dipped them once and that slowed down the decay significantly. Uh, and then we had the control where we didn't dip them at all left them out, um, non-refrigerated, and in, the one was 19 days. I think that's the in the corner there. Um, mm -hmm. At the top, we dipped uh, the ones at the top six times. Wow, that's incredible. We can go to that next slide. And here's the pendant and the body shield. Okay. So, um, so with the with the uh, pendant, this is really something that we wanted to uh, yes have the EMF protection in, in it, but also um, we wanted to support the biofield. Um, so that plasma energy field that we all have, we wanted to uh, see how well that that would um, actually increase our biofield if possible. Uh, the average biofield of a healthy person is around four to six feet. Uh, healthcare, um, natural healthcare more so practitioners, we've always seen that to be bigger for them. Um, uh, and also uh, when we look at the scans of people, you can see where um, they introduce the electromagnetic frequencies from their phones that pokes holes in a, in a person's biofield. Um, and, and we wanted to um, make sure we could reinforce that with these specific frequencies um, through the pendant and the body shield. Gotcha. So, and it looks like you can just really have the little uh, chip anywhere on the body. Right, and that's because of that uh, scalar aspect. Um, so when you have the, the crystals in uh, 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 the form that we have it in inside, we have it in a conductive gel. And the reason it's in a conductive gel is it's compressed. Uh, and when you compress it, you can actually cause a piezoelectric reaction to happen um, with crystals, especially if they're, they're um, under pressure and if they're submitted to different waves, like say coming off of a phone um, pretty uh, consistently. Um, so that's, that's always putting off a beneficial energy. Gotcha. Um, all right, uh, let's see. So just with the chip, um, in terms of places that you can put it, like there's a lot of, new technology out there that people have, you know, be able to track their steps or how much they run and it connects like their shoes to a Bluetooth app on their phone. Mm -hmm. uh, would somebody get benefit if it didn't 
hurt their foot, obviously, from uh, putting one of those chips maybe in those in those types of shoes. Right. Uh, yeah, they, they very well could. So we used to get emails with people who had uh, knee pain, um, knee pain, hand pain, whatever pain that came up. Uh, but we've had people where they actually duct taped the chip right to their knee and went for a run. You know, so we've had um, some extremes like that, and um, they they uh, went for the run. It was fine. It it helps dissipate that static that's causing um, uh, a feed of inflammation to the area as well. Awesome. Uh, so the blue blockers, uh, these took some time. So this is our second generation of blue, block, blue blocking glasses. Um, so we found that uh, we can filter out that blue light. And blue light is, is uh, specific, especially because it, it can uh, cause a lot of retinal strain uh, headaches. A lot of office workers complain of headaches. Uh, once they start wearing the blue blockers, the headaches alleviate. Not in every case because you have to really test it to figure out what's actually going on. Um, and and um, uh, the light that is filtered from the blue light and it actually enhances some of these other ranges into the green, the yellow, the orange, and the red. Uh, so, I mean, green, for instance, is very anti-inflammatory. Yellow is stimulating the lymphatic. Orange stimulates the circadian rhythms. And also red, uh, everybody uh, most likely is really familiar with that. Uh, red light is very healing and um, decreasing inflammation, uptake of mitochondria uh, output. So... These, these glasses, we haven't done specific studies, but uh, as far as how those lights will affect us through our optic nerve, but if we look at research that other um, uh, places like on PubMed and you can see what these, these lights uh, coming in, these, these, this spectrum of lights coming into the body can do for the body. Very cool. Uh, this is um, a sleeve that completely blocks out the signal to your phone. Uh, and the reason we did this was because we were asked by several people um, that they didn't, they didn't want to be uh, tracked in any way. Mm -hmm. So we came up with this sleeve and they, they, they wanted a, a complete block. So when you partially block a phone, like you have these blocking cases um, that only cover part of the phone uh, and you still get a signal to the phone, well, the phone is going to actually push harder to grab onto that signal. So you're going to get more um, of a of a electromagnetic uh, smog or, or, or electromagnetic interference, I should say, coming out of that phone into the body. And what part of that phone is not covered is usually the face of the phone, which is also facing the person. So you're gonna have more of a push going into the, to the person. So um, if we were doing any blocking, it was gonna be complete. And it's because people were asking for that complete blockage. Awesome. And these are the Guardians. So this is a different technology using some of the same frequencies, but um, different technology that is utilized here. We're utilizing radionics with these um, uh, crystals. Uh, these crystals, we made sure didn't have any heavy metals in them because heavy metals distort frequency and it uh, doesn't allow the frequency to hang on to uh, or transmit from uh, 
something like this very well on these subtle subtle ener energies. So these subtle energies coming off of the Hartman-Curry line, we're basically using that as the highway to get the signals to these um, uh, guardians. So uh, the color is specific as well because the color puts off a uh, specific frequency as well. We used um, the uh, vibrational radiosthesia wheel, it's called, uh, to determine which colors uh, to be used. And that, um, th that can be changed uh, on a daily basis, the, the beneficial frequencies that are put into these. Uh, and they 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 are um, broadcast twenty four seven. Okay, interesting. The shape is unique too because if you put um, uh, if, if you picture a toroid um, in the center of the toroid, that's the shape that it would make. Um, so the shape is unique in that it accepts the transmission uh, much better. Uh, so it's the shape, the color, and then how the frequencies get to these um, uh, crystals. And, th and then, of course, the quality of the crystal. Mm -hmm. And the iResonate is not much different except for the range that it puts off. Now, these are more um, emotionally based uh, you, as far as uh, calming. As, uh, uh, sensation of calming is uh, an important factor with these. Uh, they do have the frequencies of the EMF uh, protection. However, if you're looking more for that EMF protection, I would go with the um, original pendant that we saw earlier. Gotcha. So yeah, so we did some thermal scans here uh, with the uh, phone, actually the, the shield on the phone before and after. Pretty self-explanatory. Obviously the red is, is um, increased, red and white are the increased heat signals and, and you can see how it dissipates. And this was after uh, 20 minutes on the phone unprotected and then putting a hedron uh, device on the phone and then uh, another 20 minutes on the phone. So it significantly decreased uh, definitely the heat signature in this capacity. That's incredible. Just seeing the differences between them. And then also we did um, uh, testing with the blood pressure. This was more the pendant. Uh, and then if you have the heart rate variability, you can see some interesting things with that because some of the practitioners out there may have that. Um, you can uh, test the heart rate variability and you can see um, uh, several interesting things that'll happen there as far as trying to balance out the autonomic nervous system. Interesting. Yeah, a lot of our practitioners do use the uh, HRV. And these are, I think, most, if not all, of the studies that we ran um, on the hedron and the frequencies and the materials that we put in to the hedron. Um, mm -hmm. If we go down to, let's see, it's the Carillion, uh, any one of those. I think we can pull that up. Yeah, so this one, um, so some of these studies will have like 60 pages in them. So I picked this one, it's a little bit easier. Um, but uh, basically what we are looking at are all the organ systems that we um, tested. There was uh, 27 uh, just from people coming off, so this is an average one. So 27 out of range, 27 organ systems out of range. And um, when we uh, had them talk on a phone for 20 minutes, uh, 50, close to 50 of them went out of range. Uh, and then we had them talk on a phone with a hedron for 20 minutes, uh, 50 out of 51 all came back into range. 
wow, that's beyond incredible. Um, now, these case studies that you have here, uh, mm -hmm. I know our guys as well as you do. Um, one of the questions I'm going to start getting is, do we have access to these case studies? And I'm pretty sure I can just take the links from the uh, presentation and put that together for our practitioners if they want to see that. Would that be good with yeah. you? Yeah, right. Yeah. Awesome. Because, yeah, there's a lot of information here. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the, th these are the main questions uh, to make sure that we we handle here. Um, so the 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 thing that what what is in the device that makes it work well? Like I said, it's the twelve minerals and crystals. Um, we never used to tell anybody what, what they were, but it, it really doesn't matter if you don't know how, you, how you're using the, the ratios and, and the measurements. Um, I mean, there's, there's quartz, there's shungite, there's rose quartz, there's ameth, amethyst, amethyst um, and uh, there's also uh, some silver shavings in there, uh, platinum, a little bit of uh, shavings of that. Uh, platinum is excellent for reducing radiation. Um, mm -hmm. So is palladium. Uh, and also uh, iron, iron is, a, is, is definitely a stabilizing factor. So there's, there's many uh, crystals and, and minerals in there, uh, and then we put that into a powder form because that increases the surface area, um, so that gives us a wider range. Awesome. And then um, probably most frequently asked question is, how can you explain this to your patients, correct? Sure, yeah. So, I mean, you can go from more of a simplified aspect because it, we have all of these, these energies in there, so what we want to understand is we're all energy, right? Or not all of us, but 80% of us is basically made up of energy. Mm -hmm. um, the other 20% is physical. And what do we actually uh, pay most attention to? Well, we pay most attention to the physical uh, when we should actually be paying a lot of attention to the energetic aspect of the body. So this is these these tools are essentially like tuning forks. You put two, two tuning forks in close proximity to each other and you ding one, the other one starts to vibrate at that same frequency. So this is what you're doing. You're introducing these earth energies um, to the body and you're, you're resonating with that because these, earth, these, these actual frequencies are your base your base of operation. This is what the body operates off of um, uh, more efficiently. So if you if you were to eat a donut and you were to eat broccoli, what's your body going to um, utilize the most, hopefully? It's going to utilize the nutrient from the the vegetable rather than the the garbage. Uh, so with being in this um, C of electromagnetic frequency, what is your body going to utilize the most of? If you have something with these frequencies close to the body, it's going to resonate with those frequencies. Gotcha. And then the biggest question I get, I see you have it listed here, is why do people need to ground the devices? Yeah, so that uh, goes back to when we were talking about um, the home harmonizer, the pendant, and the, bo the uh, body shield those help stabilize the frequencies coming off of off of them. Um, and it has a lot to do with the ratios of the ingredients that are in those specifically. Uh, we're supporting the biofield, so therefore uh, grounding them actually doesn't necessarily reset them, but it stabilizes those earth frequencies in them. All right. And I think we pretty thoroughly covered the uh, history of the development of this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Uh, right, some so. of the other common things that I see um, uh, being in, in clinic too that maybe uh, some of the practitioners are um, wondering about, uh, insomnia is a big one, 
and that's usually insomnia when uh, the teeth grinding is absent from the equation. Um, mm. So uh, if they have the uh, grinding of the teeth, well, we all know that's, that could be something else going on there. Um, and then headaches. Uh, headaches are, are definitely a big one. Of course, uh, how do we know? Well, of course, we have to test it, right? We have to make sure we test it. Uh, and then skin rashes, um, hands and face uh, are what I see the most uh, from overexposure. Um, the, the blue blockers, for instance, uh, it was a little interesting story there that uh, a person, uh, I had a kid who had two monitors and he was wearing blue blockers. And the reason I could tell he was getting overexposed was just by looking at him. He had he had white around his eyes where the glasses were, and the rest of his face was was that pinkish color. He was getting a sunburn from his screens. Um, oh, wow. So yeah, he was just he was too close to his screens, way too close um, in that instance. And also, you know, uh, yeast and candida overgrowth that can be, um, and, and they're doing more research about that. Too, uh, that can be a, a big topic as well, um, as far as as far as um, the electromagnetic frequencies disrupting the microbiota, uh, and then congested lymph. So if you have somebody carrying a phone on them uh, in a specific area, that increases the reactive oxidation species in that area. Uh, if it's an unprotected phone and and also increases the extracellular fibrin lay down. So what is fibrin? That's scar tissue. So where you carry the phone, you may actually have to treat that area like it's a scar. Um, that's what right. I've found. Um, and now um, there might be many practitioners out there that found something different, but this is just what I've found over the years. Um, awesome. I mean, that's that's phenomenal data. Um, thank you for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it, it uh, is a it is a definitely a big topic when you when you really uh, dive into it and um, that it, it's yeah it's it's uh, an important one I think for sure. Gotcha. Um, all right, well, we're getting close to the end, but we do have a bunch more questions that came in that I'd like to try to get as many of these answered as we can before uh, we end off for today. Um, so the first question, and I, this is actually a really good one. It says, uh, how does this device differ from every other scalar pendant that's out there? Because there's so many. Okay, so yeah, so that's one thing that we definitely um, wanted to make sure is that we did do the research uh, behind it as far as um, putting it through all of the testing, uh, which in many cases, I don't see a lot of places that do that where they, they subject it to several tests as many tests as as we've done with it mm -hmm. um the other thing is i go back a lot to uh the ratio and the frequency the numbers that we're using um for instance uh the that pentagonal structure that you pull out of the um icosahedron if you look at the dna the abutments are pentagonal in shape. And the 72 degrees is an angle at the vertex of the abutment of the pentagon. I know this could be a little bit harder to follow without a picture, um, but that rotation, 70 degree rotation is very key. So you, you're adenine, guanine, uh, cytosine, uracil, all of those components to the DNA actually abut with a pentagonal shape. Uh, so we have those numbers in there that actually reinforces um, these bonds, those hydrogen bonds. We actually went and and did muscle testing on the atomic orbitals of uh, hydrogen electrons. And 
and the numbers there. We, I mean, we we were nuts. We we yeah. went we went crazy. Um, but we wanted to find something that worked. So yeah, the scalar pendants that are out there, scalar, you can easily say scalar. Um, but why does that work? Because of the the pressures and the actual synergy of ingredient and the ratio um, and the Schumann resonance that that is in it. I, I, I uh, that combination is key. And um, uh, just a, a, a pendant with just scalar, I just don't think does it. Um, but I could be wrong. Uh, it won't be the first time. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you being so uh, forthright with you know with the research that you've done. I mean, it's you you've really gone the gone the distance with the, the testing and the research. So, uh, a, a, just another reason why you know we went with uh, your products. Um, <laughs> fun question for you: Do they set off metal detectors? No, they don't. They do not. <laughs> Um, we were thinking about actually encasing them in a in in metal, uh, a specific type of metal. But yeah, that was one of the things that we were thinking about. Plus, we wanted to keep the cost low because when we did decide to get this out there, that was one of the things that we um, tried to agree on as far as the materials were concerned. We wanted to make it cost effective because if I'm going to use it and I'm going to have uh, a patient use it while well, they should be able to actually afford it so they can use it. Right. Well, that leads right into the next question. Uh, what is the casing of the pendants made out of? What material? Uh, the black is actually shungite. So you have a shungite powder in with the resin to actually create that black um, uh, sheen underneath that resin. Uh, right. So that that outer casing is a is actually um, a specific amount of uh, shungite and there's something else. There's obsidian in there too. All right, and then uh, last question that I have here: um, Can you go over uh, go over again the information that you were giving us about you know? Um, 80% energy, 20% physical. Oh, okay, yeah, so we have, um, okay, so how is a, a good way to describe it, so we have a, a, thermal, uh, a thermal aspect to the body, we have electrical aspect to the body, we have a magnetic aspect, because we have magnetite in our body, uh, and then we, we have the, um, uh, some people refer to it as the etheric part or the chromatic part of the body or, or some even say spiritual part of the body, right? So mm -hmm. these, these aspects of the body make up approximately 80% of the body, but we don't see that really. Uh, we just see, um, you know, the tissues and things like that. We don't see what makes up most of our body. And when you look at it, an atom, um, an atom is basically made up of mostly space. And then you also look at DNA. There's in-phase DNA, out-of-phase DNA. Uh, they're doing a bunch of research. I, I can't remember what university that is. Um, but they're doing research on in-phase DNA, out-phase shift of DNA. Um, so the, there's something there that they can't see that's happening with the DNA. So, so that energy, that's 80% of what's going on in, um, in around, uh, around our bodies. Um, that's what I was getting at there, that yeah. we are are mostly that energy and we need to be paying more attention to that. Awesome. Well, Dr. Bergman, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us. Um, this has been uh, very, very enlightening. Um, glad we got to get to all of the questions. Uh, there was a, a lot, of, lot that came in, so um, 
we uh, this is going to be made available for you guys. Um, you know, it'll be up on the webinar channel. And next week, um, I want to invite everybody to join us for our webinar. We are going to be joined by uh, Brad Bates from Energetics. Sorry, I had to remember the schedule here. Uh, and we're going to be going over um, the science behind how the energetics products line works and what that has to do with diet. So do join us for that. Dr. Bergman, um, I would love to set up another webinar with you in the future. So you and I will talk and we'll get that, get that set up because uh, you are an absolute wealth of information. And again, I thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Adam. Thanks for having me. And thank you to everybody out there that took the time out of their day to listen. Absolutely. All right, guys. Uh, we will uh, see you next week. And everybody enjoy and have a safe rest of your week.